Okay, laser-powered thrower flashlights. They're all the rage right now, but I often get asked, are they actually better than LED flashlights? Niels Gadgets sent us these two Mataminko lights, which make for a really good comparison platform of the two technologies. These are both 21700 based hybrid lights with identically sized throw channels. One has an SF240 LED, and the other is a laser-excited phosphor spotlight. Pretty much all modern flashlights are using white high-power LEDs. This is essentially a blue LED with a yellow phosphor layer on top. When hit with the blue light, that yellow phosphor layer fluoresces and then mixes to produce white light. And that's the basis for how modern flashlights work, most modern lighting in general. These laser flashlights are using what are called LEP, or laser excited phosphor emitters. This is essentially a blue laser exciting a yellow phosphor layer, which mixes to produce a white beam. Of course, because it's a laser, it ends up being significantly more intense than an LED. However, it's important to note that the optics also play an important role in focusing that beam. Likewise, LED flashlights can also be very intense when used with the right optics and reflectors. And that leads us to the interesting question. Are LEPs actually better as thrower spotlights than LED flashlights? Because LEPs do have some inherent flaws. For one, they're just the technology is newer and a lot more expensive than LEDs. And two, it's not nearly as bright in terms of total luminous output. So if you're looking for sheer output, Right there, the answer to your question is that LED flashlights are superior. There's no question about that. But laser flashlights are significantly more intense and offer a lot more throw for the same amount of output. One of the main things you'll notice is that you get a round beam from an LEP. You don't really get any spill. Pretty much all of the light is concentrated into just a small point. And there's a little bit of light leakage around that. But the point is, you really can't think of LEPs as being like a laser. They don't really illuminate any of your surroundings. They're just all concentrated in one spot. Now, LEDs, they can produce different beam types just depending on the implementation. But really, no matter what, you're going to get a tight hot spot in a thrower light, but you'll also get a wider spill. That's really one of the nice things about traditional thrower flashlights is you get that tight hot spot, but you also get surrounding illumination. Really, you can't just compare these on paper. You have to look at the beams at night in usage. Here on my right, I have the FW3S, which is an LED thrower. This is the SFT40. So this is the LED thrower at max power. And you can see it punches out there and illuminates those trees at a distance very well. It does an excellent job, I can see very clearly. But this wide spill around here still allows me to see my surroundings. I feel like I have a very good sense of the area around me. This tree out here on the right, it illuminates pretty much the whole tree but I can still see this bench to the left of it. If I switch it out for the LEP and jump this up to max output, you can see it gets out there extremely well, it illuminates that at a distance. It does a fantastic job for that tiny area, but it doesn't illuminate my surroundings at all, so I really have no situational awareness with this. So if I illuminate this park bench, you know, lights it up super bright, but can't see anything else. This tree, it only illuminates just a tiny portion of the tree that I'm pointing at is pretty much useless for illuminating this tree right here on my left. But if I'm scanning this tree line, it does a great job with that. And if I can punch through the holes in the trees and kind of see at a good long distance, but honestly, at this kind of medium to long range, this LED is a way better option because I can still see very clearly out there and it illuminates my surroundings. So here's the LED and here's the LEP. So I think that makes the difference very clear there, right? Like this is brighter at a distance, but not massively so. And this just illuminates the whole area way better than the LEP does. And then if we point over to this tree over here, right? Like not really very useful at all. That illuminates the whole tree. So there's a pretty dramatic difference there. And then if we scan the tree line, see this will punch out a bit further, but it doesn't give me anything surrounding really so again LEPs are cool they do a great job but for me there's no contest if I'm actually gonna you know use the flashlight <laughs> the SFT40 LED is naturally much brighter in this light with a maximum output of 2300 lumens on turbo while the laser light only manages 410 lumens both drop down pretty quickly as they heat up and fully stabilize at around 10 minutes at which point the laser manages to sustain a bit more output at 160 lumens. In this particular light, the laser also displays better regulation throughout the run. Things are especially interesting when we graph intensity instead of output. Here, the laser light displays its vastly superior throw, 
with a starting point almost six times more intense than the LED thrower. The LEP manages to sustain over a quarter million candela throughout the run, while the SF-240 barely manages 4,000 candela. So clearly, if throw over an extended period of time is a priority, there is simply no contest here. So the LEP, no question about it, is going to throw further. It's going to throw very, very far. You know, size to performance is going to vastly outperform any LED thrower. It, it just will. It'll throw much further. However, it's not going to provide much, if any, area illumination. And that's really what it comes down to. See, in my experience, I find that area illumination is critical even in a thrower because it allows you to see your surroundings. It allows you to see kind of context for the object that you're shining at. Um, and that is pretty much invaluable in my opinion. With an LEP, whatever you're shining it at, is the light is super isolated. So, you know, you really only see that small point that you're pointing at. I don't know, to me, it's just obviously not as useful unless you're looking at something that's very, very far away. And it's often said that because LEPs are so like long range, they're not even very useful if you don't have binoculars or a telescope or something. I find this in general with throwers is they can go really far, but you know, that's only so useful because your eyesight is also limited. And especially at night where you're gonna have like a lot of particulates in the air and the like, that's going to inhibit how far you can actually see because you're looking down the beam. And that is again true with LEPs where the beam itself can be so bright sometimes that it starts to obscure whatever is actually downrange. So that is a limitation. If you're in an area with high humidity or a lot of particulates in the air, especially if there's like smoke or something, then any thrower flashlight is gonna be pretty limited in its usefulness. And in that scenario, an LEP starts to be kind of useless because it's really only good at range. So, you know, that's one thing perhaps to consider. So I will say that personally, I have yet to find a use for an LEP really that I can't fulfill just as well, if not much better with an LED flashlight. But I have heard some compelling use cases for these types of lights. One example, it's a very niche example, but I think it's a very interesting one, delivery drivers. At night, driving, you don't want to shine this super bright flashlight at people's houses, right? That's going to be disturbing. An LEP allows you to shine it and isolate, say, a house number or something like that, just so you can verify something without casting any light in the area that's going to disturb people. And I've heard that a lot from people who drive delivery trucks and the like telling me that LEPs are super useful um, for that scenario. And I'm going to be honest, <laughs> I haven't really found any other use cases to me where it makes sense to use this and not this. But again, that's up to you. I really think if you know that this type of beam is going to be useful for you, then this is going to be a good option. It does what it does very well. There's no denying that. So that being said, again, unless you know that this is the kind of thing you want, I'm pretty much always going to recommend LED-based throwers because I think in any general use case, they're going to be vastly superior. And I think for most people, even those people who need throwers, this is just going to work way better for them. That's my opinion. And personally, I will always pick the LED thrower unless I am just wanting to have fun and mess around because I won't deny LEPs being very laser-like are super fun to point around. Here's where things get really interesting. That's when we start to talk about hybrid lights, which is to say lights that have flood channels and throw channels. So the big deficiency with an LEP light is that there's no spill. However, that can be remedied by having a second channel of just flood-based LEDs. So that's the case with both of these Madame Inca lights, where there's a center throw channel and a ring of floody LEDs around it. The flood LEDs used here are Cree XBD emitters, which are available in either neutral or cool white, or colored orange, red, green, or blue options. These unique options are super cool and definitely open these up to a wider range of possible uses. This FW3 has 6500K emitters, while the FW3S has the neutral 5000K emitters, which I definitely prefer, though they are a bit greenish in color. The flood channel on these lights is very, very bright. It does a fantastic job illuminating the area around me, but it doesn't really get there at all in the distance. You can see this tree on my right is barely illuminated. I can barely see it um, in this neutral white, neutral white one right here is a bit dimmer, although I do like this color more. Okay, so this is the LEP and the flood on it max. And as you can see, we're illuminating the tree line very, very well. And we have this super bright flood in the area around here. So this gives me everything I need to be aware of my immediate surroundings and to see at a distance. Uh, but this, and this is really great. I actually really enjoy using this but it's still not as good um, 
at mid-range as this LED is right here. And if we throw this the flood channel on with this LED too, we get that same immediate surrounding illumination, which does a great job, but we also get great mid-range illumination and great illumination at a distance. So for most usage, especially if you're not exclusively using it for long range, this LED option is just superior. It's just better. Um, but you can't deny that this LEP punches quite a bit further. I find it rare where there's a big enough difference between the flood channel and the throw channel for it to really be worthwhile. Things are different when we're talking about LEPs because they naturally have no flood. And this I think is a really interesting and compelling way to remedy that issue. It's still not going to really give you a lot of context to a longer range object that you're illuminating, but it will allow you to navigate around by illuminating the area around your feet as well as also still being a useful flashlight for up close tasks. You can just set it to the flood mode and use it if you're reading or working on something up close. Even with the two channels at medium to medium long range uses, this is still not going to be as useful as just the throw channel on here, let alone the fact that this is also a hybrid with a flood and a throw channel. So in my opinion, having a hybrid is really compelling and it's really something that you might wanna look into if having an LEP would be useful to you, but not that often it can still be a generally useful light with that LEP functionality when you need it or when you want it, right? Because it is really fun and these hybrid lights are some of my favorite to play around with. I, I quite enjoy them. However, I still haven't yet used one of these lights that I feel truly replaces just a standard LED light in terms of general usage, especially because a good LED light is still going to be cheaper than a hybrid light like this because LEP technology is expensive and dual channel drivers are also generally a bit more expensive. Now, as far as these particular lights go, this is the Matamanko FW3 and FW3S. These are very interesting 21700 base lights. They're very bright on the flood channel, super bright lights, super impressive, while also still having solid throw channels. Now between the two, I definitely find the LEP version more compelling just because this is actually a really good LEP. It's really fun to use. I like this light a lot. Whereas this one, the SFT40 throw channel is really good. I kind of don't find the flood edition to be super useful. It is nice for like super up close tasks like reading and the like, but for general use, I find it a bit redundant. I think the SFT40 channel does a good job all on its own. These are really good lights. They're well built. They have a single forward clicky switch for their interface, and it is a bit of an interesting interface. So the standard operation is when you press and hold, it'll automatically turn on to flood on low. And then as you have press, it'll gradually cycle up through the modes getting brighter on the flood channel before switching to the throw channel, then cycling upwards, and then it'll eventually uh, transition to having both channels on, the flood and the throw. Alternatively, if you do just a quick half press, it'll jump immediately to the throw, and then another quick half press will jump immediately to the throw and the flood. So this is a pretty straightforward interface, and it does allow for pretty fast access to whatever it is you might be wanting. Now, sometimes the speed, the timing with the half presses can be a little difficult and I might accidentally jump up to the throw channel when I just want a brighter flood channel. So it's not a perfect implementation. Clicky switches aren't really my favorite for having a lot of modes and stuff, but they are simple. It is a pretty durable system. However, one issue I do have regarding the build of these is that the, the switch on this one is quite nice, but the switch on this FW3S is kind of not very nice. It just feels gritty and difficult and kind of terrible. So a bit of a quality control issue here. One thing that is pretty neat is that there are LEDs in the back of these switches, so you can find them easily at night. I rather like that. The pricing on both of these lights is really solid, with the FW3S coming in at $80, and the laser-equipped FW3 almost doubling that at $150. This is definitely more expensive, just due to the technology used, but in either case, I think these lights offer really good value and are pretty easy to recommend. Another light that I have here is the Mataminko FW2. This is just an LEP, and I actually really enjoy this light. It's an 18650 light, pretty affordable. But honestly, when it comes down to it, the FW3 is not much bigger, but it does perform quite a bit better. It's much brighter and much throwier. This is a pretty solid option. If you're looking to get into laser excited phosphor, this might be the best way to start out because it does have that hybrid functionality that makes it still useful as a flashlight, I think, while offering a really good laser channel. Okay, so that's about it for this video. I hope it was helpful. If there are any questions you have, please leave them down in the comments below. Of course, if you're interested in either of these really neat lights, we'll have a link in the description as well as a coupon code that you can go and check out. And again, thanks to Neil for sending these lights. I will also have a video coming out soon that will compare more laser excited phosphor slash LED flood combo lights like this. So stay tuned for that if you're interested in more. 
And uh, yeah, that about covers it. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Yeah, thanks for watching.